A lot of times it can be easier to develop applications with Cassandra or Cassandra NGraph and understand a graph database with the studio all on your local box. And this repo shows you how to do that simply. And this walk we're through will take you through it. So I hope this is a quick demonstration of running data stacks, which is uh, Cassandra with the graph enabled in Docker. And we're going to hook to it with data stack studio and just pop up a little graphy thing. We'll load some data, we'll insert some data, and we're just going to run their uh, little intro thing and show how this works. So we're going to use this repo. Um, as this is actually, it turns out, was a little bit of work on top of work pe people had previously done to make this work. We're going to bring this all up in two containers in Docker with a single command, uh, duh, with Docker uh, Compose. And it assumes that you're running on Linux with the right version of Docker Compose or late enough. And all I'm going to do is bring Docker Compose up here, and then I'll start describing some other stuff while we wait for that to happen. So I'm going to do, so I'm in the right place. When it comes up far enough, we're just going to click on this. So basically, all we're going to do, is, all we did was start this thing up. And when we get in there, so we have the Docker DSE instance, I'm going to put a picture in here, and the Docker Studio instance, and they need to be able to talk to each other. There's some funky networking things that had to happen because of Compose, and you'll see it in the notes. And then basically what we need to do is we need to configure a data source in uh, DSE in the Data Studio, uh, DSE Data Studio Enterprise, and point it at the Docker container that has Cassandra in it. So let's see, uh, you know what, well, let's just click on this. So um, this is actually, if you start up from scratch, this is what it thinks it's gonna use. Because of the way networking working, and we're in Docker, I didn't just install this on my local machine. We're actually gonna use the container name, which is in the container DNS, DSC. And then we're going to just call this the DSC data star. So we'll see if we're up yet. Nope. Okay. So we'll come back to this in a minute and we'll try this again. So the only other thing I think I kind of wanted to show here was in the Docker compose file. So basically we have a data stack enterprise, a DSC instance, which is basically a Cassandra service running by itself. Cassandra is on 9042. Graph is on 8182, and then there's always on SQL on 97, 90, 9077. These are all exposed onto your host machine so that you can actually write a program that talks to the, uh, Cassandra uh, from that host. I did set the limit to this to three gig. By default, it goes to 25% of your machine size. So if you need a bigger or smaller, you can just set that parameter. And then the studio will run, and it runs on 9091, which is kind of what we expected based on the URL we saw. And it just depends on the studio to be up. And then I did persistent volumes here. So if you were to start this and stop it, your notebooks and things will hang around. So let's go away and we'll go back to this and see if it's up. So it's still coming up, but the uh, server should actually be up now. So the um, web server. And we're here at the notebooks, or really at the hub for the studio, which operates on its own notebook paradigm. So you can see here that uh, we have, uh, working with Graph, we're just going to pick the simple demo. Now this is actually going to fail here, and the reason is because we're in Docker. Uh, we're not actually connecting it to localhost. We actually need to go to DSE, which is the host name for the Docker instance um, that actually has data stacks running. So we're going to go DSE. And here we're going to go DSC. We're just going to name, make the name there, that better. And then we'll test it. Do, do, do. So that'll go out and try and connect to that. And we connected to successfully. So that means this connection will work. So now this goes away. And we will, I'm just going to reload this thing. So I nuked all the volumes before this. Okay, so when you first start, right, this notebook's gonna be like, I need this studio tutorial graph database. 
right? Or graph. And so we're going to create that. And I'm just going to pick the defaults here. So it's been created. Yay. So now I have a working notebook that actually connects to, um, th that connects to the DSC graph instance. And there's a bunch of stuff in here about, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some vertex types, uh, vertex labels. And these are going to be gods, demigods, human monsters, a location, and a titan, which is a type, right? Like there were gods and demigods, but before them, there were titans. So I'm going to create these. And so these created vertex labels. And now I'm going to create some edge labels. So the relationship between the gods and the demigods and the titans can be, they could be uh, some kind of sibling, or they could be, uh, they could have battled each other, or one could be a pet, like Cerberus is the pet of one of the gods. Not really a pet, more like a servant. All right. And then what we're going to do here, so we def decide, define, de defined the vertex types and the edge types. And so there's going to be a graph database. Vertexes are the dots, edges are the lines. And now we are basically going to describe kind of how the edges can go, right? And if you look out here, you can see that we're basically going to create the edge labels. And I'm not going to describe how this database works because it's beyond the scope of this. And then I'm going to come down here and we are going to define different entities. So we're going to define Saturn, Jupiter. Those are gods, by the way, here in this case, not planets. Hercules, Hydra, Cerberus is a dog, three-headed dog. And then we got Tartarus, which is the land of the dead. And so we've created those entries. And so now we've created some gods and demagogues and titans and locations and pets. We define the graph interface, uh, which you can see here, right? So, and then, um, so we created the vertexes with all of the entities in it. We created Cerberus and Tartarus and all that kind of stuff. And then we started adding links. I didn't show this. I should have made it. Oh, there we go. Bigger. And then you can see all the relationships and you can see um, when they battled each other and like what their relationship is and Pluto's uh, Pluto's dog is a Cerberus, right? So we ran all that and it succeeded. And then I'm going to come here and I am going to run this. So this is actually going to graph the relationships between the demigods, the gods, humans, monster, titan, and location. And so here we can see that Jupiter is a god. His age is 5,000, and his name is Jupiter. And we can say Neptune is a god, and Saturn is a titan, and the sea is a location. So Neptune loves the sea and Jupiter is the father of I don't think that's correct anyway the Titan Saturn and why is that anyway and Jupiter lives in the sky right so this one here is just the sky and we can see over there that sky's a location and Cerberus is a monster and Cerberus is the pet of mighty Pluto all right so and then we could do another one here, and the, uh, this talks about the colors and the sizes. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to clear this one too before we get there. And this one here, uh, find a god who has the name Pluto, and find all that god's brothers, their lives, and their pets. And so if I scroll up here and hit the go button, we can, we can see that Pluto has a pet Cerberus. He's the brother of the god Jupiter. He lives in Tartarus and is the brother of the god Neptune. So this was a DSC graph database and we just went through, brought it up in Docker, connected to it with the studio, started, created a database, created some vertices labels, edge labels, vertices, edges, and then graphed it. And that's it. Hope that